Welcome to Kai Stories. You know, our ideas sometimes start with just the tiniest thought. And, you know, I'm, I'm such a big fan of TED Talks and The Moth. If you know NPR's The Moth, it's a, a radio show in the U.S. that has, it features very personal, gripping stories from people. And I was thinking, you know, Kai has so many wonderful, interesting people with so many stories to tell. We really should do something like that here at Kai. So, I am so pleased to present the inaugural Kai Stories this year, and I really want to thank Scott Robertson, really Scott, who uh, many of you may not know that Scott is a professional actor with a, a lot of uh, great credits, uh, including Brady Bunch. Uh, and I would also like to thank the Kai Stories team for just doing a phenomenal job of pulling this together. And I would like to thank the, um, the Kai Stories participants for taking a chance on us this first time. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. So welcome to Kai Stories. This is the inaugural Kai Stories, and I wanted to thank Gloria, and I wanted to thank Sue Fussell uh, for starting, for coming up with the idea of Kai Stories, and I hope that we make you happy with the stories that we have today. I also wanted to thank, I also wanted to thank um, uh, the team that put the stories together, and uh, that's Nazanin Andalibi, Andrea Forte, Nick Diakopoulos, and Misa Marayama. So they did a great job. So I'm not going to spend very much time at all up here. I'm just going to introduce the presenters. Um, there is a kind of a plan to this. The very first story is an origin story uh, that has to do with uh, the origins of Kai from somebody who was there from uh, the very beginning, uh, Susan Dre. So let me introduce Susan Dre for our first story. One thing I'd like to mention, and that is that I had a concussion on Friday. So if I totally mess up, I'm sticking to that as the reason. I'm sorry, I, she asked me to tell you that and I forgot. That's okay. Thank you. Renowned storyteller, Laura Packer, says that history is just the combination of events, and stories. This is my story, the story of the birth of Sigkai. The year, 1982. The month, March. The location, Gaithersburg, Maryland. The event, the first conference on human-computer interaction. The conference we now know of as the Gaithersburg Conference. And I was there. I was also seven months pregnant with arguably the very first Kai kid. <laughs> it was sweltering hot when I got off the plane from the cold Minnesota winter. It was 75 degrees in March. Unheard of, right? And somehow, This, I think I'm supposed to swallow it. <laughs> it was sweltering when I arrived in Gaithersburg. It was 75 degrees, and I was coming from the cold Minnesota winter. And somehow, that heat seemed emblematic of what was to happen over the next few days. Now remember, as Ben told us, this profession didn't actually exist in 1982 as a profession. We had the amazing work that, that Ben told us about this morning. Thank you so much, both for telling us, but even more for doing it. And 
there were other, some other people doing things, but there wasn't a real profession, and we didn't have an organization that was just us. Well, therefore, when Ben and Bill Curtis put together the Gaithersburg Conference, they really didn't know how many people to expect. Maybe 200. 900 came. 900. Well, you can imagine, the hotels were bursting at the seams, and so were all the rooms where we were presenting papers. In fact, it was kind of hot from all the body heat. And it didn't help that I was seven months pregnant. I remember wearing my gray flannel pregnant woman's tent. And with it, this very tie. If I can get it off. Now, back in the day, women who were working in academia and industry had a sort of uh, uniform of our own. And it started when I first started at Honeywell in 1979, we were wearing these little tiny grosgrain ribbon bows, which was fine. But by 1982, we had progressed to silk bows, which I probably won't be able to tie, but I am going to try. This is actually a historical artifact. It is the actual tie that I wore in Gaithersburg. So nowadays, of course, we don't have the same kinds of restrictions on us that we used to have, which is really good, isn't it? These really weren't all that great. Well, the heat was building in the rooms. And by the end of the first day, the rallying cry was, we can't let the spirit of Gaithersburg die. We can't. We can't let the spirit of Gaithersburg die. And so, that evening, a group of us representing different organizations with different pieces that now we see as Kai got together. I almost didn't go. The night before had been a rough night, and I was really tired. Anna Rachel had a different thing in mind. She started kicking up a storm as if to say, Mom, you have to go. You have to go now. So I went. And it was so wonderful. I opened the door and was immediately impressed with what by 1982 standards was great diversity. There were academics and practitioners. There were old people and young people. There were women and men. And I was working at Honeywell, where I was the only senior, the only PhD level scientist woman in a group of 75. There weren't a lot of women in my life. And so I was really excited to see the people who were there. So right here, you'll see Lorraine Borman. Lorraine represented ACM. And here, here's Sarah Bly. Sarah Bly was from SIGGRAPH. Here, is our very own Marilyn Manti, now known as Marilyn Tremaine, from SIGSUC. And over here is Tom Martin from ACES. There were other people there, but those are the ones I remember. Well, we set to work. And we very quickly agreed that we needed to have an organization of our own. And so, the first question was, where is it going to live? Well, Mer uh, sorry, Lorraine, very graciously, said ACM would be the perfect place for it. And we said, yeah, okay, that sounds good. And then we had to figure out what to call ourselves. Now, I was the chair of the Computer Systems Technical Group of the Human Factor Society. So you can guess what I said should come first, human, computer interaction, right? I mean, humans come first. 
I think for all of us, we're really lucky that saner heads prevailed. Because someone pointed out that if we were human-computer interaction, we'd be sick, <laughs> which doesn't flow very well. So we decided being Sid Kai. We finished the meeting, and we finished our conference. And over the week, the weather had moderated, and it was back to the usual 40 degrees, so that when I went back to Minnesota, it was a complete shock to the system. I left knowing that there was a new, wonderful new organization, one that, look at us today. And also, I left with lifelong friends, people who are still here, who are still friends to this day. When we think about the kinds of diversity that are really critical in our field, Ben's description of the diversity in our products and processes was fabulous this morning. And going to the diversity lunch, how inspiring. And I think it's important to remember that even from those very early days, we were a diverse group, ever adding more and more and more diversity. And we'll keep doing that because we value diversity. We value inclusion. Two months later, Anna Rachel was born. She likes to say she's the first Kai kid. And you know what? She is. <laughs> 